over pronation means that your foot is rolling way too far. Under pronation, or also called supination, is when your foot rolls to the outside. There are so many different specifics that you need to know before you drop all that cash. Make sure you stay tuned to the end when I reveal which pair are my favorite. Hey, coming to you from the hut today. It's a really noisy day in my neighborhood. It's a garbage pickup day, a little warm out here, so we'll see how far I get without having to turn on the air conditioner. But I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that you want to make sure you look for in a pair of shoes. And I also want to tell you about several different types of shoes that I have tried over the past few months. When I first started looking into the details surrounding the proper fit and the proper shoe, there was a lot of terminology that I wasn't really sure what they were talking about. So I thought we would begin with some of these definitions. Bear with me if you already know. When you talk about the drop, that was one of the first things that I was reading about that I had no idea what they were talking about. So what is the drop? Heel to toe drop refers to the vertical slope that is from where your heel is down to where your toe will touch the ground. Typically the drop runs between six and 12. So think of zero being completely flat. Something else, heel crash pad. And what that means is extra cushioning where the heel strikes and extra cushioning up near the front. Midsole, there's padding in the middle of the shoe. And then of course, insole is a very thin liner, which is why most serious walkers and runners look into replacing that insole with their own therapeutic style. They don't always have to be prescription level orthotics, but they're definitely much more supportive than that very flat insole that typically comes with a pair of running shoes. When you go to look for your shoes, you can look up specifically tennis shoes for walking as opposed to a runner. And many times these websites will classify shoes that are meant for the walking. So here is what is in my rotation. This is the Brooks Glycerin, the one that my podiatrist recommended. The reason why this shoe was recommended is because of the soft upper, which accommodates my weird toe after three surgeries. They're great, and even though they're not wide, they're a half size larger than I normally wear. So if you don't even wear a wide, there are shoes that run wide and these shoes do run wide. These shoes were just under $200. I think they were $179. By the time I paid tax, they were $200. That is the Brooks Glycerin. I have a lot of the Brooks because that's the one my doctor recommended. And if you're wondering, how did I afford all of these shoes? They were not given to me, but I didn't buy them either. Not in the traditional sense of putting down my credit card. I actually used my Poshmark account because I didn't want to spend $200 on a pair of shoes that I was not going to be able to return. If you're interested in what I'm talking about is check out my Poshmark video. Now, before I show you the Hoka's and the On Clouds, I wanted to show you one of the first shoes that I ventured out and bought. And guess why I bought these? Mm-hmm. They're super cute. They're called Noble. They would be great for your cross training or an aerobics class, something like that, because look at the tread. That's not really the kind of tread that is great for trail or the walking that I do. And the other thing, check out this insole. Look at that. That is paper thin. So these are a size six and a half, which is my size. They're not wide and they don't have that mesh. It's a fabric, it's a material, you hear it, but it's not that mesh breathing type and it does not give nearly as much as my Brooks do. You can tell that there's a drop. This is the drop. So from the heel to where the flat part and there's a slight, slight rocking. So these would be great for an aerobics class 
or just to wear if you're just going out to the grocery store or something like that for me. Now, I cannot imagine running in these because of the style tread. They were new, but I did buy them on my Posh account, so I got them at a discount versus if I had gone straight to the No Bull store. Super cute. They have other styles that are really adorable. And of course, that's why I was tempted to get them. And do I regret it? No, they're still a fun shoe. This is the shoe that you probably have heard a lot about. And I have to say, they really do live up to their name as far as a comfortable shoe to wear. Super cushioning on the inside. As you can see, these are a serious contender. They're very comfortable. They are a wider shoe. And this is a 7B. And you can see that it more than accommodates my insoles. You want to make sure whenever you buy a pair of shoes that they are stamped and you know you are getting the real deal and authentic. That's one of the things you look for when you buy, especially off of a Poshmark or a third party. These are a 7B. So again, I'm buying a seven because they don't always have a six and a half wide, but these run wide and yeah, they're super wide. My husband looked at me the first time I wore them and he goes, wow, you have big feet. <laughs> hmm. Said no one ever to me <laughs> prior to that. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry they're dirty, but I just wore them this morning. They have great tread, a, a dirty tread, clearly. Whenever you clean your shoes, don't put them in the wash. That's really not the best thing for them. It's better to take a brush and scrub them off with a little natural soap. And I say natural, there are several liquid soaps out there that, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of chemicals. And just wash the laces and perhaps clean off your insoles. But you would never, ever put them in the dryer. So remember, care for them and they will give you a lot of miles. Tread's still great on these shoes, and I am loving them. But are they my favorite? Well, stick around. I'm going to tell you. Here are my second pair of Hoka, and these are fairly new to me. They were pretty much brand new. You can see by the tread. The tread is still in great shape. Now, I was able to buy a six and a half in the shoe because the Hokas do run wider. Pretty. And the Hokas come in an assortment of colors and combinations. They're really pretty. And as I had said before, you probably have heard about these TikTok and uh, Facebook. Lots of uh, folks raving about these. And these are a Bondi 7. I'm liking them. Liking them a lot. So what are these? These are, yeah, what are these? Can, well, they're Swiss engineering to start with. But can you tell what these are? <laughs> Want to guess? Cloud tech. That should give you a hint. This logo on cloud, on cloud. You can see that this is what their Swiss technology is all about. It's their super shock absorbing system and I wanted to try them out. So I did purchase these on my Poshmark account. And so I wanted to make sure I liked them before I put a full pop into a purchase of them, which I may still do. I am not using these for my morning walks, but I am wearing them. So if I'm going to be on my feet all day, I did wear these out to the pumpkin farm. If you saw that video I put out a couple of weeks ago. And when I got home, there were little pieces of bark all shoved up into these, <laughs> these nooks and crannies. And I had to take something and pry them all out. They weren't in here but they were all in, in the grooves. So that's something to think about. Where will you be wearing it? If, if you're like me and you're primarily on a flat surface, then that's great. But if you're going to be doing some trail running, I don't know if these would be your first choice because all of the, the nooks and crannies uh, gobbles up things, but they're super comfortable, but a lower profile than some of my other shoes. Okay, so this is the other brand that I have picked up, and these were a great deal. So I wound up getting two different pair, and I'm not sure how they like to say this, but K U R U. Kuru? I don't know. I'll say Kuru. Now look at the tread on these. What does that tell you? It tells you that these are not the shoes that I would be wearing on my morning walk because these shoes have the kind of tread that are great for an aerobics class or for CrossFit training. This is a meshy, soft, uh, breathable fabric right there. They don't have a very high drop. That's okay. 
this particular one that I have, and this is a six and a half wide. And I think that's why I wound up getting a second pair because the first pair I bought, they did not have a six and a half wide. I bought the seven. I thought, well, if I can find a six and a half. So these are outdoor, walking around the city, grocery store, whatever. Pretty decent styling, I think. They don't look like a big clunky running shoe. I really got these for a steal. One pair was 30 and one was 35. And so I, I pay a little bit of shipping, like six or $7 shipping. And for less than 50 bucks, I have a really nice pair of shoes. They're a little bit expensive when you go to buy them brand new, but this is a great way to know if you like the shoe well enough to purchase it. These are a little stiffer. This is something that I've noticed right off the bat. This is a little higher on this shoe and it's not really cushioned. Same thing with the tongue. It's a little stiff here, as is this back. You can see it's a little stiff. I wanted to show them to you though because they're not as wide, which means they don't look, they don't look as much like an athletic shoe. They just look sort of like an athleisure shoe without being too narrow. So that's Kuru and I do like these quite a bit. Okay, so in addition to going up a half a size or perhaps even a whole size, if you can afford it, you probably want to have at least two pairs of shoes to rotate them. If you're doing big walks or runs, it's going to allow the inside of the shoe to dry out. It's important that you rotate them. That's why I have several pairs. I have roughly eight pair in rotation at all times. And when I first get a new shoe, a new brand, a new style, I only wear it for two or three hours in the house. I don't go out on a big walk the next day in that new shoe. I break it in. Same thing goes for a new insole. So my favorite shoe for walking my serious walks is the Brooks Glycerin or Ghost. Brooks has a wider toe box, a deeper toe box or taller, if you will. It accommodates my insoles. So overall, it fits my foot perfectly. And because of those things, it is my go-to shoe when I'm doing my walks. The shoe that I wear inside the house is the Hoka. And Hoka has so many different styles that you really want to know why you're going to be wearing the shoe, where you're going to be wearing the shoe, and what's the deal with your foot before you invest. Let's say we're going to be doing a city walk. You've seen some of my uh, downtown Los Angeles videos. On the last downtown LA tour that I did with my friend Renee, we walked 15 miles that day. So I need good shoes. And that is on cloud. For that type of walking for me and with my insole in that shoe, it's like walking on a cloud. And after my research, I knew which shoes I wanted to get. I had already looked at their websites to know the differences between their walking shoes, their running shoes. So I had a pretty good idea. So I was able to look up on Poshmark exactly what I wanted. And I was blown away with how many there were in my size. I know this is a lot of information, but it took me quite a while to get through all of the information that's out there and also to understand my own foot problem and the reason why I had to get a very specific kind. If you have started a walking program or perhaps you're going to start rotating a few different types of shoes and if that's the case, tell us what's in your rotation. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe and share this, especially if you know someone who wants to start getting fit and they need the proper shoes to do that. All right, take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.